Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Here's the deal, y'all. So this is what has happened. Um, first, I want to give a shout out to MLR for coming through in that cash app. Um, I'm not going to be able to send it to pay the salary. So only things I could do now are either wait for another workaround if it ever pops up or I could sit on that balance until I get back to the States and then um, put it towards my kids when I'm there. I can't really think of much else. Um, anyway, um, allow me to uh, also give shouts out to those who covered what I'm about to talk about or covered about whom I'm going to speak um, on YouTube. The Crimson Cure, Average Man Unplugged, and uh, Manosphere Highlights Daily already covered Alicia, who refused the Cheesecake Factory. They took care of that already. And apparently she responded, I'm going to listen to the response later, but it doesn't matter. And here's why. If you want to know why their apology doesn't matter, you listen to Crimson Cure. Because Crimson knows when women are capping and when they're not better than I do. I picked up on the fact that she was willing to learn some lessons when it came to Sanjay because Sanjay's not black. And I used to wonder, well, is it because they respect these non-black men? First, I used to think it's because they don't respect non-black men that much. I used to think that's what it was. Now I'm like, wait a minute. No, they don't. It's both. It's actually both. Yeah. So in any case, I say this largely because... Um, what I wanted you all to understand about her is what she showed us that has not yet been said. Now, number one, I already stated that we all know Ebony K. Williams. That's the title of the video. We all know her. We know someone like her. We know different women that you could combine into a Jada Pinkett Shakur. Some of us know a Jada Pinkett Shakur somewhere in our lives. But Alicia is somebody that she is somebody's that we all know. Women that have felt like they're better than other women for whatever reasons, they just felt they were better. They just, I'm better than other women. I'm better than them. I'm just, uh, I'm taller than them. I'm smarter or I'm richer. Take your pick. I'm, and then they can't find men that are on their level as they see it. So they have some tough decisions they have to make. And in these tough decisions that they have to make, they got to choose. At some point, they have to choose between a man they think is under them, or in her, in her case, literally, because most men are, most human beings are, or no man at all. If you were to ask them, they would say, well, why can't I find a man that ticks all the boxes? Well, that's because those men are so rare, they might as well not exist for most women. See, women refuse to tick all the boxes for men. They refuse. They pretty much sit up and say, OK, well, since I'm tall, I'm going to act worse. Or since I have green eyes, I'm going to act worse. Or because my hair is a bit softer, I'm going to act worse. Or, OK, now I got this BBL, so I'm going to act. They pretty much look for reasons to act worse. Therefore, not ticking boxes or all of them. They refuse to tick all boxes. Most of them ideally want to tick all boxes visually so that they can act a father mucking fool and be as bad as possible internally. I'm talking about the West. She kind of represents that. We all know someone that thinks they're just so smart and they're just so special. And um, you don't do to them what you do to other people. I'm uh, I'm a beautiful woman and I'm tall and I get courted. And, so, and you can tell that because they have boundaries that you must respect while they don't respect your boundaries and you're not to have them anyway. Sanjay, don't agree to go on another date with her. She didn't learn a lesson. She sees you as a mark. See, to her... She looks at you and she thinks, well, I can do the same thing to him I would do to a light-skinned brother his size, but he doesn't even have the knowledge of us that a light-skinned brother would have. He doesn't know what the games are. That's what she's thinking, a mark, a successful man and a mark. Mm. 
Now, that's already been covered. He's a target. He's not her type, and that's not his fault. An eight foot tall brother with nothing but muscles and a, uh, a beard and a bald head probably wouldn't, and, and jet black too, probably wouldn't be her type for very long. And if there's any reason why she can't show that man off to her friends, well, Crimson Cure covered that. Literally, I watched the Kevin Wesley interview and I started thinking about what I was going to cover. And then I saw these uh, these other videos. I saw Manosphere Highlights Daily's first then Kevin Wesley's and then uh, Crimson Cure, an average man unplugged. They covered it. There's the, there was something on um, my little sheet of paper that I didn't cover. That is that she and Ebony and um, Jada recently have shown why we need an unapologetic black patriarchy. Now, some who are Muslim are going to come and tell me, well, listen, black mind, you know, color really doesn't matter in Islam. How about you fuck the shuck up? Because you're going to say things that are true for the false reasons. And by the way, as far as I'm concerned, Palestine and Israel deserve each other. Now, why would I say that? Well, it's no secret. Palestinians will sit up and say that black people are abid. Even black Palestinians catch it from them sometimes. Now I would admit that we're, we're far safer amongst Palestinians than we are amongst Israelis. And that's why I don't want bad things to happen to you all. But the thing is, if you have a, a specific set of instructions, that means you are not supposed to discriminate on the basis of anything that is involuntary. And then you turn around and you do it even linguistically, you broke the rules. And God is punishing you for the rules you broke. He's punishing us black folks for the rules we broke. Nobody's getting a pass unless God hates you so much that he wants to throw you in hell later on. Then he gives you a pass in this life so you stay doing it. Sends a few warnings so that, you know, he makes sure it's your fault. And then when you meet him face to face, that's it. it it's your fault. You're going to hell in a handbasket. But that's a different story. I have to specify black patriarchy because, well, not only do we need a patriarchy, but we're going to need a black one because we can't really expect others to make their patriarchies work to our advantage. Even if they meant well, we can't expect them to know how. It's not their fault. But what happens when they don't mean well? What happens when people actually um, somewhere in the back of the back of the back of their mind fantasize about a paradise with no dark skinned people? So if y'all want this discussion, we'll get to you later. If you don't, no biggie. Back to these ladies. They did show us why we need a black, unapologetic patriarchy. I'm not talking about even oppression. That's the first thing that a feminist wants to say, but they know I don't. And they know that I don't mean oppression. See, here's the thing. Will is tolerating this because he doesn't want to be like his dad, I guess. Okay. So the one that wouldn't treat him like this left him and the one that uh, won't leave him treats him like this. That's what he has to choose from. He doesn't get what my parents had. Have. Making sure that V stands out. He doesn't get what my parents have. They had to work to build it. That's bad for Will. And that ain't even his fault. Will doesn't get, um, and he's Will. That's not all. To make matters worse, um, this lady Alicia showed early on, first thing that she showed was she 
was raised that men cater to women that uh, uh, she takes and you give. She has boundaries you must respect. You have no boundaries she's bound to respect. She showed that gynocracy and that gynocratic, hyenocratic thinking right off the bat. And even though she wanted to try to get a non-white man so she could fleece him, because let's be honest, she sees him as a mark. And she sees him as a tree to climb because um, she sees him as a, a wall to scale some sort of challenge because he said, OK, you know what? You're going to act like this. We done. OK, I mean, look, yeah, you got boundaries. I respect that. But you know what? You broke all my rules, too. She's like, he got rules. He's actually enforcing boundaries. If he had been black, she'd have elbowed him in that car. If she had been willing to go on a date on him, she would have elbowed him in the car and been like, you little two foot mother. And I'm not ranking on Sanjay. I'm talking about how sisters think. She'd have been like, you little two foot mother. You lucky I'm even out here with you. She'd have started hitting him with the purse and all that. Because we've already seen how they act when it comes to us. They don't. So she's pretending to be willing to learn a lesson. She's pretending to ingest and digest the lesson that he taught her so that she can turn around and use him later. She just doesn't want to be on the losing end of this. I got schooled. I got put in my place. But that's because of her hyena friends. Who's going to teach men? Notice Sanjay. It, it, it didn't matter to Sanjay. He's like, so what? I don't have much time. I don't have much experience with women. I don't have to. I don't have much time to get the experience. Um, she's taller than me. Uh, Sanjay was like, I, it doesn't matter what she wants a man to have. If I don't have these things, she still can't disrespect me. She still can't get a one-sided benefit out of me. What is the reason? What does Sanjay say? He said he came from a heritage and a legacy. Now, we come from one as well, but we're still learning what that is. And at the same time that we're learning what that is, man, this just came to me. The same time we're learning what this is, the gender war scales up, steps up, gets worse. You're not allowed to have this. You're not allowed to pass it down because you're not allowed to find women that will allow you to until recently. See, my father was not the kind of man to tolerate a crap and he didn't believe in oppressing women either. But I got to see this. He didn't have to have long talks with me about about this for me to get all of this from him. A lot of this did come from talks, but there were certain things I was just able to come across and understand. My pops never believed that he had to just take what black women were willing to give him. Never believed that. He didn't believe other men did either. Guess what? Well, now my brother and I look and we say, well, we don't have to just take what they're willing to give us. And as a matter of fact, let me see what they're willing to give other men so I know what they're willing to give men. And then I find that I found 30 years ago they're willing to give me less. I said, oh, shuck, that fit. That's not happening. I will not accept that. That's less. Maybe she doesn't realize it, but that's less. Then later I came to realize, no, they do realize that. Somebody pulled me off to the side and told me. Y'all you heard about that. Told me in 2001. I remembered it again in 2017. I ain't been the same since. And it worked for me. It's working for my son. I never got a chance to live with my son. Pisses me the up off. But you know what? That's one thing he does understand. He doesn't have to just take whatever they're willing to give. Because they, especially, especially if they're not willing to just take what he's willing to give. If they don't have to take what he has to give, he doesn't have to take what they're just willing to give. He understands that. Yeah, it's like that. Sanjay came from such, and he was made to understand his sisters don't have to just take anything for men, and the men don't have to just take anything for women. And so he didn't just take anything. She did everything wrong. He said, you broke all the rules. He told her in the car, I got rules and boundaries too. You broke every last one of them because she's so used to, I give and you take. I showed up. Look at me. How about you fuck the shuck up? She's not capable of learning that lesson. She knows what the lesson is. She's not capable of believing the lesson. Some students that I teach now know what the lesson is I'm trying to teach them. They're just not capable of believing that that's actually the lesson that they need to learn. 
I got students like that. That's why they continue to repeat the same errors in English. And then when they get their test scores, doctor, what wrong? I am do this. I am see that right there. Told you what to do and what not to do. You did what I said not to. You didn't do what I told you to do. You followed that retarded, lazy teacher that you had back in high school. Yes, I understand you. But English classes are not about only being understood and understandable. They're about actually being correct. That's different. And if you start off trying to learn a language like that, you save yourself time in the long run. When I got here, they speak a broken Arabic. Broken, really broken. When as soon as I, soon as someone told me it was broken, I told everybody else, don't use that with me. I don't even want to know it. And if you use broken gram with me, I'll know it's broken because I won't understand exactly what you mean. I'll be confused about two possible or three possible meanings. That's when I know it's broken. But if you do it, I'm not going to try to figure out what you mean. I'm going to slap the shit out you if you do it three times. And people stopped. Not with me. They would slow down and speak properly, but they wouldn't try that, that broken Arabic that they use with people from India and Pakistan. Save me time. I'm not fluent even now. I never will be because they talk too fast. But the fact is that at least when I, when I do speak, I don't say things that are broken. If I write, I might write simple sentences that are correct. I would say simple sentences, but they're correct. I don't use a broken Arabic. I'm not banging the grammar up. These guys are doing this in English and they got the nerve to come to me asking me why they, they got these low marks sometimes. I'm like, Ninja, you know why you got them. You just didn't want me anybody, anybody to tell you that they're wrong and put that on the test. You're wrong. You'll get better if you keep trying, but right now you're wrong. You got to know where your errors are so you can improve. But my dad's upset. Uh, nigga, that's between you and your dad. But see, that's, it's like that here. It's the same thing when you translate that here. We started off with dysfunction. That's all we were taught. If you decide that you want to pass on a good legacy, you're not going to be able to build that with the Western woman, white or black. But we know what the Western black woman, you ain't going to be able to build that. Either one's going to take your kids and run. The difference is that the sister's going to tell you right off the bat, Ugh. all that neck rolling and finger snapping. She's going to start off like that. You might be able to put in some years with that white woman and really imprint certain things into your kids with her. You might be able to do that. Boy, that sister, uh-uh, nope. Your kids will be five, gone. That's it. They might, they might even do you real dirty. Soon as the kids are born, they leave you with the kids, file for child support. You got the kid living with you. You still got to send them child support or you go to jail. Then when the baby's old enough to walk, talk, potty train, all that, and they can understand everything, then they come and say, I'm taking the baby now. And you got to comply, you go to jail. You want to escape that? You cannot escape that with the Western black woman. Not today. Not possible. This is why you must go not only elsewhere outside the West, but you must go where they're not being Westernized and find some of those ladies and reward that good behavior. That's what you must do. So that those these areas will stay like they are. And you must cooperate with the local men to let them know what's coming down the pipe. Otherwise, the same thing will happen. You may have these, these you raise these really great kids, sons and daughters, and you're just like your daughters are already going to learn what they ain't got to take. Your sons, you could raise them to where they also learn what they're not, what they don't have to take. And then yet and still, by the time they get older, the place where you are and where you met your wife, his mother, is now the exact same, and all he has to choose from is the same thing you and I had to choose from stateside. London, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Jamaica, Belize, Bahamas, Barbados, Trinidad, Guyana. You see where I'm going with this? It could be the same thing. So she showed us actually the importance of not picking Western sisters. I got friends that were raised by their moms and dads, but here's the thing. 
their dads, I now realize that dads were able to become dads by not being willing to even think along the lines of what to pass on, let alone pass on to the, these sons. You ain't got to take just anything. I had dudes with good dads telling me when we were teenagers, man, you need to learn to take what you can get. Nigga, what? Take what I can get. The hell, man. So what if what if they got, just got to take what I decide to give? Take what what if they, I tell them they got to take what they can get from me? Does that work both ways? They'll be like, hell no, man. No, man, they're going to leave you for a dude that's going to do it. OK, I see. But when I say the same thing, I'm a dog. Shuck this fit. I'm done with that. And if you want to be done with that, it's important. You bounce, you go elsewhere. But it is also important that we work with the men in these places so that they know how to stop the spread of feminism to their own daughters, nieces, sisters even. And if they're taking care of their mamas to their own mamas. We got to give them a militant opposition to feminism before it becomes misandry. That means if you're taking care of your mama, you determine what she listens to and what she doesn't. Like, you know what, mom? My house, my rules. Yeah, I'm going to look after you. did a good job with me. I'm going to respect you. But you're going to turn that feminist shit off my TV. Who are you talking to like this? Well, then get the F out of my house. You have to do that. I hope this helps. As always, thank you for listening to Black Heart, Black Mind, Blackout, Assalamu Alaikum, Black, heterosexual, non-select, male power, just because they don't like it. And Black Patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. Which I hope you were able to get abroad and establish because you sure ain't going to be able to establish it in the West with them sisters. Thanks for flying with us on Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep Jet Black with me till the wings of the wheels fall off. Gender, justice, forever. <laughs>